Hello and welcome to Food Tech 101. Today we're going to make some simple fairy cakes. The key bit of learning in this particular practical, or the reason why I chose fairy cakes, they're a very basic dish to make. The key word with this particular practical is aeration. Now what is aeration? Aeration is the process of allowing air to be combined into ingredients to make them lighter and or create more volume. For example, sifting flour removes lumps and adds air, making the resulting flour, and typically the food dish using the flour, lighter in texture and consistency. Before we get started, just do me a quick favour. Click that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon, so you'll be the first to know whenever I upload a new video. Okay, let's get to it. Now for this particular practical, I want to experiment with two things in particular. Uh, some recipes suggest that you have to, when making something like a fairy cake, you have to follow a certain process. For example, you have to cream the fat and the sugar together first, beat air into that, then you have to slowly beat in the eggs, and then you have to sift in the flour, because the sifting process is meant to add more air by creating more air around each particle of flour, so there are not as many clumps, so you get adding more air into the mixture, aeration. But what I want to discover is, is there any difference between this fancy process of creaming and sifting in flour and then mixing all together, or if you just dumped all the stuff together and beat it thoroughly, would it make a difference? So with this particular practical, I'm going to make two batches of fairy cakes. The first batch, I'm going to just put, throw all the ingredients together and I'm going to whisk it together using an electric whisk and then we're going to bake them. The second batch, I'm going to do it uh, the correct way, where I'm going to First of all, beat the sugar and the fat together, cream method, then whisk in the eggs, then sift in the flour, because that process is meant to create a lighter mixture. I'm going to make both batches for exactly the same amount of time, and then we're going to, to have a look at the end result to see if following the correct procedure of all the fancy ways of sifting in flour and beating stuff separately, to see if that really does create a lighter, fluffier mixture. So it's kind of like a food experiment. Let's do it. Now the ingredients for our uh, fairy cakes really could be easy to remember. Just think, 300! I don't know why I said it in that voice, I was thinking, Spartans, Spartans! Okay, just all right, forget that. 300, uh, you've got 100 grams of fat, 100 grams of sugar, and 100 grams of flour, with just two eggs. 100 grams of fat, 100 grams of sugar, and 100 grams of flour, plus two eggs. First up, we're going to add our fat. Now this first one, for this, we're going to use the all-in-one method. So I'm just going to put all the ingredients in all together. Now when making a fairy cake, they do suggest to break it down, do it all separately, but I'm going to see if I just do it all together, will it make a difference? So that's the first mixture, all in one. I've just pulled the ingredients together, gave it a good whisk until it's still fully integrated. And yeah, it's it's kind of hard to tell by just looking at it if how much air has been added into the mixture, but it's nice and creamy and smooth. It appears quite light, but until we do compare with the other method, it's really quite hard to tell. Next up, uh, the thing is when doing an experiment, it's very important you keep the controls the same. So for example, an example of a control would be uh, when I do my other batch of fairy cakes, I need to uh, use an electric whisk as well. So I couldn't exactly uh, electric whisk with one and hand whisk with the other. So I've got to make sure I'm beating it for the equivalent amount of time using the same kind of equipment. Also, I'm going to portion out the same amount of mixture into the same amount of cupcake cases. That way I can, I can be sure that they're all the same size, so they're all going to bake at the same rate, so we can get a more even result. So I'm going to aim to put a spoonful in each one to begin with. I'm going to go around to make sure each one is evenly filled. This is method two. I'm going to cream the fat and the sugar together. Then I'm going to beat in the eggs. Then I'm going to sift in the flour last. And the sifting in the flour is supposed to add more air and volume and lightness uh, into the mixture. More air should mean a lighter, fluffier product. And with fairy cakes, 
the lighter the better. So well, let's see if that works. So I've creamed or mixed thoroughly the eggs and the fat and the sugar together. And to be honest with you, it's not looking particularly aerated at the moment. It doesn't look particularly light or anything. As soon as the eggs went in, it sort of makes it look a little bit gooey. So, so far, it's not easy to tell if these separate methods are making a difference. But the final stage, which is meant to be a big deal, is adding on the flour. So I've got a sieve here. I'm gonna sieve in the flour because the process of sieving in the flour is meant to create a lot of air into the mixture. So, let's do it. The flour does look a lot lighter, but let's whisk it in, and ultimately let's see if it makes a difference once it's all together. Okay, so I've fully creamed the mixture, and to be honest, so far, it's not really easy to tell if the um, added technique of sifting in the flour or beating things separately has in fact um, additionally aerated the mixture. So it's kind of hard to tell at this stage because it doesn't appear to look much different. But I'm going to add the mixture in, bake it, and then the proof of the pudding, as they say, is always going to be in the eating. So just like before, I'm going to make sure there's an even amount of mixture in each cupcake. Then I'm going to bake. So here we have our two mixtures. We have our all in one mixture and we have our separate mixture included sifted flour. Now just to look at them, and to look at them carefully, um, there does appear to be some visual difference, but not much to tell right now. This mixture appears to be a little bit stiffer. Now maybe that's because of the air, it's sort of bulked up more, so to speak, it's got more air supporting it. This one looks creamier, so to speak. Um, this one is a paler color than this one. Maybe difficult to tell on the camera, but this one's a bit paler than that one. Again, suggesting that maybe the ingredients have integrated better. Uh, again, before we've baked it, it's pretty hard to tell, but there does appear to be some visual differences, at least between them. Whether or not one will be lighter than the other, we shall see. Tell you what, let's cast your votes now. Which one do you think is gonna come out the lightest? The all-in-one method or the fancy pants method where we've uh, creamed things separately and sifted in, sieved in the flour? So have a guess, have a vote. I'm going to try and see if I can add one of those interactive tags up above, if so. Um, have a look and, and vote above which one do you think is going to work out um, the lightest. So I'm going to pop this in the oven now for about 15 minutes. Come back, let me cool, have a taste, see which one comes out best. Now before we go any further to the, the testing and tasting part, uh, a good thing to do with these is to decorate them. Now to decorate them you just need say 100 grams of softened, softened butter or margarine, with 200 grams of icing, and you give that a good thorough mix together. You can add to a little bit of food coloring, or even a little bit of uh, flavoring or essence, and just pipe that on, or you can just spoon it on. But that's a, a nice way to, to top or to finish these kind of cupcakes. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a link to a video, a fellow YouTuber has got a really great video on how to decorate cakes. I'm gonna add a link uh, of that video uh, in the description of this one so you can go through how to decorate cakes well. But for now, I'm gonna take one of each. Boom. So here we have our two fairy cakes, maybe two different methods. They look very similar. Uh, the ones that were all in one seem to sort of split in the middle a little bit, but not so much that it makes a big difference. If I'm gonna look at, if I'm gonna light it, to, I'm gonna turn it to the side, so if you can see them. I'm gonna say, the ones that were done separately with sifted flour, they appear to be slightly, they've risen slightly more than the other ones. So they have risen more. So if you can see there from the side view, you can see that these ones have risen a little bit more. So visually, visually, the ones that had the sifted in flour and that were mixed separately, they do appear, they do appear to have risen a bit more. Just from a visual point of view, our sifted sample appears to have risen more than our all-in-one method. But let's see when we cut it, what it's looking like. So I'm gonna take, take them out of a case. 
leave it there so we can sort of remember which is which. So, they both feel very soft. Kind of hard to tell so far, I'm going to cut one in half. So, these are two mixtures. Now I can tell by looking at this that although they are both soft, I can see that the mixture that I had to sift it in flour has more defined air pockets than the all in one mixture. It's not a massive difference, but I can definitely see that it has more air pockets in it. And as I'm feeling it, this one is also softer. So, I mean, it's, it's surprising because you can actually tell the difference. The, the sifted flour one has risen, a little, has risen a little bit more. It's a little bit softer and it has more air pockets in it. So now I'm gonna taste and see if I can taste the difference. Okay, so, so far, much to my surprise, because I didn't think it'd make, it, I didn't really believe it'd make that much of a difference, even though the theory said it would. The one with the sifted flour has risen a little bit more is a little bit softer, appreciably softer, although difficult to measure without precise equipment, and appears to visually has more air, have more air pockets in it. Now let's taste to see if we can taste the difference. So this is the, this, I'll go all in one method first. Mm. Nice, very cake. Very soft. This is a sifted flour one. Let me see if I can, if I can tell, taste the difference. Taste-wise, they taste pretty much the same, as you would expect. However, you can taste this one's a little bit lighter. Very subjective, this, really. Because if I lined up 100 people, they may come up with different results. But I can taste the difference between these two methods. This one tastes, I can taste, it's a little bit softer, it's a little bit, not softer, a little bit spongier than the all-in-one method. So, interesting. So what have we learned from this? We can just throw all the ingredients, the 100 grams of flour, 100 grams of fat, 100 grams of sugar, two eggs, mix it all together. We can just get a wooden spoon or, or a whisk Mix it all together, bang it in the oven, and you're gonna get a pretty decent fairy cake because the recipe is gonna dictate that. That ratio of ingredients will produce a pretty light fairy cake. However, depending on what level you're on, if you wanted to have a fairy cake that was the ultimate in lightness, then I would suggest you cream the fat and sugar together, add your eggs, and then sieve in the flour because the sifting in the flour is a method which they say, and has also proven true to be, each time you sift through the flour, it separates the flour particles and adds a bit more air into the mixture, which results in a lighter, fluffier fruit product. Hey, can't argue with science. So once again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, Fruit at 101 is also on Instagram, so we're always posting pictures of different things we're making, and we're also on Facebook as well. Now what might be nice to do to finish off this particular practical is to just make one of our cool cake boxes. If you look through our back catalogue of videos, there's one called How to Make a Cake Box. Really cool practical. If you're an adult and you want to make something as a gift, or if your kid's stuck at home uh, on lockdown, then it's a nice, fun product to make. Just get a large piece of cardboard, follow the instructions, and make yourself a nice cake box that will make a really pretty gift for mom, dad, or for someone in your family for Easter. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. My name is Mr. Lineburn, but you can call me Sir. Okay.